Hello and welcome to the March 28th edition of This Week in South Carolina In Session. I'm Gavin Jackson outside the State House here in Columbia. Well, it was somewhat of a busy day today up here in Columbia. Uh, Wednesdays usually are the case, but again, like we said yesterday, only the Senate is in session this week. The House is off again on furlough and vice versa next week. But we did see a lot of activity today coming out of the Senate and the Senate Finance Committee. Uh, Senate Finance Committee passed out the $8.2 billion budget proposal to the Senate floor. The Senators will take that up at the second week of April since they're off next week. But more importantly, we saw a lot of Senate floor action today that is still going on right now dealing with the uh, VC Summer Nuclear Project. Now, specifically what the Senators are talking about is a joint resolution that they sent over to the House that the, sent, the House sent back to them that would lower rates uh, tied to SCNG customers. So you know that 18% nuclear premium that are on every SCNG customer's bills right now, which is paying for the failed VC Summer Nuclear Project. They are debating whether to reduce that and how much to reduce that by. The House proposed cutting it to zero, getting rid of all 18%, and the Senate is, is talking about around 13% ever since they got a report that they talked about yesterday that would justify reducing the rate to 13 per, by 13%, uh, and that said that it would not, just, it would not jeopardize uh, scan of the parent company by FCNG's financials. So that debate is ongoing right now, so we're going we're gonna to bring you some highlights. Again, we don't know what the outcome of it will be today, if there will be an outcome today, but here is Senate Majority Leader Shane Massey talking about this joint resolution. 99% of the people who work from SCE&G did not do a single thing wrong. They didn't cause this problem. They're not the ones who got us here. All they did was show up and go to work every day to keep the power on, and I think we need to recognize that. Many of them have taken um, unsubstantiated hits, and to the employees who are watching right now, I'm going to tell you, your leadership is using you as pawns. They're giving you spin. That spin is largely inaccurate. And I'm going to go through some history that I hope will put some context to those comments. But I think a lot of people who are working for that company are starting to realize that some of the things that their leadership have told them um, is not true. This is a very rare and extraordinary situation. This General Assembly has not historically, and I expect will not into the future, engage in rate making. There is a reason that we've created the Public Service Commission. We would typically prefer not to be involved in any of this stuff. We don't want to be involved in it now. I would much rather be talking about something else and working on other issues. This is not something that we are going to do on a regular basis. If, I think they were deceiving state regulators. Well, they, I, they knew there were problems. They were acknowledging those problems in private. They were not, however, acknowledging many of those problems, this, at least the seriousness of those problems in public. I, I am confident, and I think these emails actually point out, they did know about the problems. They... Um, they were not fully disclosing these problems to state regulators, which means they were not fully disclosing them to the public either. Um, and I want to make this point. We're just talking about SCENG today. Um, Santee Cooper's not off of the scot free. There's a lot of problems there. We'll talk about that another time. The SCANA CEO looked at us, Mr. Pro Tem, and said, we're going bankrupt in three weeks. They told us we're going bankrupt in three weeks. It's been a little bit more than three weeks. Um, and that is an important point for this whole discussion today, which I'll get to in just a few minutes. But we've heard the bankruptcy threat Repeated. consistently for the last several months. And as you well know, I didn't buy it the first time, and right. I haven't bought it since. Right. And I think information that we've gained since then has been, has confirmed um, that we thought it was a bluff. And state senators were not the only ones with harsh words for utilities today. Governor Henry McMaster came out hard against the state-owned utility Stan Santee Cooper. That's an electric cooperative that was a partner with SCNG in the VC Summer Nuclear Power Plant Reactor Expansion Project that failed and that we've been talking about for the past eight months. Remember, this came to light last summer. Uh, lawmakers have been working in the off-season dealing with bills to help remedy regulatory oversight and fix some of the rates that uh, customers are paying for this failed project now. But the governor was specifically talking about emails that came to light yesterday that show that the, the utility had hired two lobbyists specifically to undermine his efforts in selling the state-owned utility. 
Now, McMaster did not fault the lobbyists, but he did go after Santee Cooper officials, and he called Santee Cooper a, quote, rogue agency repeatedly. McMaster was not holding back today, so let's listen to several of his comments that were very sharp tongue coming from McMaster. That they had no choice about. They had to buy their power, and they did not, they did not create this mess. They did not create this, this disaster, this um, spectacle. And this spectacle is getting worse and worse as we see that a state agency is deliberately and openly defying not only the law, not only the, the governor, uh, not only common sense, uh, but doing so in a manner the, uh, that is deceptive and is just plain wrong. I was face to face guaranteed that the lobbyists had not, would not, lobby against the sale or in any way cooperate with those seeking not to sell, not to sell Santee Cooper, which I think is the only way to get us out of this mess. But I was guaranteed face to face, promised in this conference room here not long ago that that was not happening. And these documents show that it was. That is not acceptable. Hiring of those lobbyists for the purpose for which they were hired, as is demonstrated by these emails, is to work against the sale of Santee Cooper. It is not Santee Cooper's business to work against the sale of Santee Cooper. It's Santee Cooper's business to provide power and to do so as economically as possible. That is the beginning and the end of their duty. It is not to get involved in the economics or the politics of whether to sell Santee Cooper or not. The Baseload Review Act virtually guaranteed that rates would be passed on without scrutiny, without objection, uh, into eternity. And you have rate payers, customers out there that are buying power from monopolies. They have no choice to go elsewhere. So when a, the power company adds uh, a charge to their electric rate, the customers had no choice. Uh, they are required to pay that. The customers, the ratepayers, are not the ones who've gotten us into this mess. It is the poor management of two entities, Santee Cooper and South Carolina Electric and Gas. The customers, the ratepayers, should not be the ones to pay for those mistakes. So I want to give you guys a little bit of an update about what we've been seeing with school safety bills right now. I know there's been a lot introduced, but only one so far has really gained traction. That's one we've been tracking for you that you've been paying attention to uh, so far this session. That's Senator Sandy Sins bill. She's a Republican from Charleston, and that bill would outlaw, make it a crime essentially, to threaten violence with a deadly weapon in schools. Now we've been hearing subcommittee hearings on this. This bill got passed out of the Judiciary Committee earlier this month, and it's been on the Senate floor where it's kind of lingered for a little bit. Uh, much to uh, the bane of Senator Sandy Sin. Now, she's been trying to get that bill up on the Senate floor. Again, senators can contest. It just takes one senator to contest a bill to essentially stall a bill on the Senate floor. And she's been pushing hard to get that bill heard. So we always like to give you a little bit more context than just the soundbite here, uh, especially with what goes into the politics, the, the sausage-making procedures behind the scenes here at the Senate and the State House, uh, and how bills really get moving. And we heard from Senator Sin today, who again got fed up like she did earlier this month in the Senate Judiciary Committee over attempts to stall her bill since it's seen as one of the most, uh, you know, most likely bills to gain traction this year when it comes to school safety measures. Again, others have been introduced, but hers has really gone the farthest than any. Uh, and it's still stuck in the Senate, still needs to get over the House. We have less than a month left, essentially, to get these bills moving. So we saw her frustrations really bubble up today, and she actually got called up by several other senators for uh, try, for really tell, telling uh, them what's going on behind the scenes with her and Senator Gerald Malloy, who's a Democrat from Darlington, who has really been obstructing this bill. Uh, he voted, he didn't vote for the bill getting passed out of judiciary uh, when other senators did. The entire Senate Judiciary Committee, besides Malloy, voted for this bill to get to the Senate floor. So offered up a bunch of amendments. We have a clip for you about how this played out in Senate Judiciary. And then we also saw how it played out today on the Senate floor after Senate Majority Leader Shane Massey tried to get that bill procedurally moved to a third reading slot. Let's watch what happens here. Not totally sure of the effects of this, and so I would ask that if Senator Lloyd would consider, or Senator from Darlington would consider, maybe doing this on the floor if we can get this bill out of here so we can determine what adding this subsection is about. If that won't work, then I would ask Senator Malloy to let us know whether, if he is going to support the bill or not, 
if we make all of these changes, because I'm just getting a little bit concerned, especially since last week he offered to trade me the magistrate's bill for this bill. Is, this, is this real? Is this a real, are these real needed amendments? Colleagues, some of you already know, I think most of you know, although the, pu although the public does not know, that Senate 431 is a bill that basically could allow our police officers to detect and help school shooters get them mental, mental counseling before anything terrible happens. It's a tool that our law enforcement officers badly need. Unfortunately, however, there is a senator from Darlington who has contested this bill, come off of the bill. Now he's got a senator from Spartanburg objecting to it, even though I believe we actually had an agreement that this bill would go forward to second. But if it's not gonna go forward to the second reading, then I think it's time that everybody know. In Judiciary Committee, some from Spartanburg, for what purpose you rise? Point of order. State your point. Under Rule 52A, no senator can um, directly or indirectly by any form of words impute to another senator or any other senator's conduct or motive. She's talking about a motive on a conversation that has not taken place. Mr. President. I, I can correct that and make it just a matter of fact. State the Senator fact. from Johnson, we would ask you to be aware of the rule. Yes, sir. So rather than commenting on motive, how about let's just get straight to the facts. About three weeks ago, Senator from Darlington was sitting on the subcommittee when, or the full judiciary committee when this bill was heard. And when it was heard, he basically did not want it to move forward to the Senate. And when I asked why, he stated loudly and clearly that he would trade me a vote on the magistrate's bill. That bill, for those of you who are unaware of it, is Senate Bill Number 148. That bill was aimed at having larger counties help pay rural counties magistrates raises. So again, that's just an example of the nitty gritty activity that happens up here at the State House. It's not exclusive to the Senate and actually vote swapping is not anti-ethical. It's not outlawed. It's interesting because we did see Senator Sin try and uh, make a unanimous, unanimous consent request to outlaw vote swapping, which was shot down. Uh, the Senate president at the time, which was Senate uh, Minority Leader Nikki Setzler, said that there were several objections to that unanimous consent request. However, he did not name names, but we do know that there were a few people that did not uh, want to outlaw vote swapping. So that just gives you a little bit of an idea how things work up here. She shed a little light on it and got shot down for doing so. Speaking of nitty gritty, uh, we, the Senate is out next week, but when they return that second week of April, we're going to see them uh, take up the budget. The $8.2 billion budget will be on the Senate floor, and that will take priority over everything else. So once those bills start moving, um, things will get stuck behind them. And if we want to see bills make it back over to the, the House to get approved before uh, the end of session on May 10th, it will take two thirds vote to get those bills over there. So things become a little bit more dicey as we head closer towards the end of session and the crossover date, the April 10th crossover date, which falls right in the middle of everything uh, with the Senate there debating the budget. So stay close to us. We're going to be we're going to continue to cover that. But let's give you some comments right now from uh, Senator Hugh Leatherman. He's the Finance Committee Chairman. He spoke about the budget today and gave a little bit of an idea about where things are going to go uh, when they get back. Fred, thank you. Uh First of all, I want to report on where we are on the budget. Uh, earlier today, the uh, Finance Committee passed out the uh, H 4950. That's the fiscal year 1819 general appropriation bill, and also 4951. <clears throat> that's the capital reserve fund. So, that will be coming out. The staff has several days of getting, getting prepared for it to be put on the line. It should be on the line uh, by Friday of this week, the day after tomorrow. And uh, then uh, the electronic posting of both bills will be next, no later than next Monday. 
And like we said, Senate debate is still ongoing over that joint resolution S-954. Like we've talked about before, the House wants to reduce that 18% surcharge on every SCNG customers from 18% down to zero. The Senate is looking at a, a different number, possibly reducing that down to 5% uh, based upon a report that they received recently that would that took into account SCNG's financials should the rate be reduced. So there's going to be some give and take there. Whatever the Senate does do uh, will likely be different from what the House sent them back. So if they do change what the House sent them, which again was zero, they're going to have to send that back to the House to get them to concur on that change. So we don't know what the House would do at that point. Again, we don't know what the Senate's going to come up with either because they're still debating. Uh, but whatever happens, it is a joint resolution. So should they come to an agreement, which is uh, likely, uh, then we, we won't need to get the, the governor's uh, signature on that bill because it's a joint resolution, it's a temporary resolution, and this is a temporary rate, remember, uh, because this rate is basically being reduced until the Public Service Commission can hear uh, more details on the Baseload Review Act going forward uh, as it pertains to the SCANA and Dominion Energy merger. So. This is not going to really be settled until later this year, but until that is settled, they want to have that rate reduced as low as possible. So more on that later. And again, like we heard from Governor McMaster, he wants to sign a bill that would get rid of that Baseload Review Act on uh, customers' bills altogether. Again, the Baseload Review Act is that 2007 law that was signed into law that um, basically lets SCNG charge customers for that uh, VC summer project, which again has failed and is really going nowhere right now. So. A lot of moving parts, but again, most activity we've seen from the Senate right now dealing with this SCNG uh, situation. So be sure to keep up with this. Listen to South Carolina Public Radio this week to get more details on what's going on as this uh, story continues to unfold. Also, stay with ETV throughout the 2018 legislative session. Remember, we're always here every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, giving you updates at 7 p.m. on SCTV's Facebook page, our YouTube page, and my Twitter account at Gavin Jackson. Also, you can listen to State House Week every Friday with Russ McKinney, where he recaps the legislative week for you. And you can check out the South Carolina Lead podcast, which we drop every Tuesday. I host that podcast where we talk to uh, State House reporters covering the big issues up here and uh, give you that insight that's beyond the headlines, that's beyond just the everyday articles, so you have a better understanding about what happens under the, the Capitol Dome up here in Columbia. So. Uh, a lot going on. There's also the State House Daybook that we publish every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at SCETV.org. So you know when the meetings are, what time they are, the agendas, how you can watch these meetings, and also all the state headlines that are important to you in understanding what's going on with state politics. So plenty of information out there for you to check out, and it's all pretty much at SCETV.org. I'm Gavin Jackson outside the State House here in Columbia.